Welcome back to Old War Stories with Uncle Jay. This one is uh, entitled, It's a Privilege, Not a Right. And this has to do with, once again, senior year in high school. So we're talking 1996 to 1997. And there's a few interesting things. The teacher was Mr. Bernstein. Howard Bernstein. I happen to remember his first name. Uh, Bernstein was an interesting character. He was a fixture of the school. He had been there fucking forever. He wasn't disliked, but he wasn't liked either. He wasn't mean. He was strict, but he wasn't mean. Um, kind of a hard fellow to deal with, if you will. I, I can't really explain it too good. Um, he also never got sick and was never out. Until this year. Now, over the years of my stint in high school, I had become friendly with the school librarian. And by the time senior year came around, I was pretty much given the key to the library, if you will. Uh, I had the run of the place, and I didn't want to go to lunch and deal with all the assholes in the cafeteria. I didn't even eat lunch because my dad cheaped out on everything. I had no money. Uh, you know, I had no job. I was in high school, and he wouldn't let me get a job either. So I had no money and no lunch, and he didn't give a shit. So I just went hungry all day, which is something I continued on into my college years. Well, anyways, uh, I had no reason to go down to the lunchroom, so I would go to the library. Now, you couldn't just show up there, but I kind of pled my case, at, or pleaded my case, I guess is the correct uh, uh, tense of that. And the librarian said, yeah, I mean, you've been in here a lot over the years, and you can come in on your lunch break. I mean, don't bring anybody with you, but, you know, it's okay. Um, just show up, and we know who you are, and you do your thing. And there was a, a computer in the back that I could play with that was an IBM. And there was also a computer in the other back, at the other end of the library, that was a Gatewood it was a Gateway 2000, and I actually set it up, in fact, and that had Microsoft Encarta on CD-ROM, and it had a dial-up modem, um, 33.6, v V.32 bits, you know, it was high-end shit, and we had these shell accounts from Hofstra University that we could dial into, and it was text-only, and you could get emails, and all kinds of crazy stuff, and I actually once connected to that on an Apple II, which was an interesting adventure. Uh, but anyway, that was that, and that thing was on a cart that could be wheeled out if need be, which was very rarely, and it had a high-end 24-pin Epson dot matrix printer. But I'm getting way out of the story here. Uh, like I said, I had the key to the library. I could go in there at any time, and in fact, there was one door that was always left unlocked, and nobody ever knew that it was left unlocked. But I could sneak in there if I had to. But I was always, I would always wait for the librarian to show up. Um, anyways, uh, I ended up getting substitute teachers from time to time, and I spoke to the librarian, and I said, listen, if there's a sub, and I got all my work done, there's no reason for me to be sitting there when I can come here to the library and do my thing. I would just go on the computers because that was my thing. So, I, you know, she wrote up a pass for me that was basically carte blanche. You could come in at any time during any period of any day at any time for any reason is essentially what this card said. And I kept it with me in my wallet that had no money in it, but I kept it with me. And I would have to show it from time to time. When there was a recalcitrant hall monitor, or which was usually a teacher on one of their periods off where they'd sit and grade homework and shit, you know. But anyway, I would always go to the library. Why is this whole library thing important? 
it turns out there happened to be somebody else in this Bernstein class, which was a pre-calculus class, I don't think I actually mentioned uh, before. Um, there was someone else in that class, and her name was Patty. The Whiff. That's right. She was in my class there. Now, this was not the first I knew of her. I knew of her back since the third grade. So we'd see each other, we'd be in the same class, but we didn't talk, we didn't have much to do with each other. But, you know, that was that. And in senior year, she was taking, uh, I think, chemistry it was. And I had already taken that in, like, ninth grade because of the way the curriculum was laid out for kids with certain grades and things. Um, I ended up taking that early. So I knew the stuff, but it was like three years old, and I don't remember the crap anymore too much, but she had some questions on how to balance an equation, and she had a couple of examples, and it, you know, fired off a few synapses in my brain, and I said, oh yeah, I kind of remember this, and I helped her with it, and she had a friend also that she's still friends with that also helped her with that, but we would get to this Bernstein class early and Bernstein would end up showing up like right when the bell rang or he ended up going out sick for like two weeks with like laryngitis and we had a sub for two weeks so I showed my carte blanche card and went to the library but I had asked Patty, I said, do you want to go to the library with me? Now, this was not what the card said, but I had gotten to a point uh, where I could probably get away with this. So, I don't think I actually cleared it first. I think I just showed up with her, and I said, listen, um, we're just going to end up sitting in the corner there. We're going to be quiet. I'm just helping her with some shit from another class and she was like okay you know just don't you know don't bring anybody else in you know it's just her you know i know who she is and she's quiet too so we'll you know we'll just keep it quiet between us and that's kind of how it went and we sort of struck it off patty and i and ended up later on that summer seeing each other and the rest is history but there's more to the Bernstein story, which is getting back to privilege, but not a right. Uh, that was actually on the first day of class. Bernstein was like a tough nuts Tony kind of thing. Or Tony tough nuts, I should say, as Joe would put it. And he would... He would be fair, but also kind of a tough guy at the same time. So he gave, uh, I guess, an ultimatum, or not an ultimatum, a, a um, I don't know what you call it. I forget what the term is. Maybe ultimatum is right. He, he gave, he, he set a, a thing up in this sheet that he handed out. And he said that if you achieve a grade of 90 or higher, I think, throughout the school year, then you would be exempt from the final exam. So I was all over that shit like Velcro. I was like, if I don't have to take a final, fuck yeah, I'll definitely do my damnedest in this class. Now, pre-calculus had nothing to do with calculus at all. We went over algebra. We went over trigonometry. We went over proofs. We went over stuff I had already learned and a little bit of this is what you're going to be doing when you derive equations and, and things and, and I, it, calculus in high school I actually dropped out of the fucking class I withdrew <laughs> that's how bad that was <laughs> uh, anyways um, to hell with all that Bernstein said that exemption from the final is a privilege, not a right, and is up to teacher's discretion. 
<laughs> so I would I would be okay in class. I wouldn't, you know, yell out. I wasn't like the other assholes in the class or anything. Um, but uh, I definitely tried hard in that class, and I ended up getting very good grades. And the whole thing with Patty, I was like, well, I'm definitely going to do my damnedest now. I mean, it was like I almost had something to work for. So this all went on, and I think Bernstein ended up being out for, like, yet another week at one point during the year. And we finally got to uh, a thing on theorems, maybe? I, I don't remember what it was. It's inconsequential. But Bernstein specifically said, this is the part of the class where all of you are going to fail. I stood up again. <laughs> I stood up and I said, what do you mean, fail? Fail is not in my vocabulary. I said, you say that everybody does very poorly on this part of the curriculum throughout your years of teaching? Well, you could be good, and these are exact words, once again, I didn't bowdlerize myself whatsoever, I said to him, dead in the face, looking straight at him, I said, you can be good and goddamn sure that not only am I going to pass this, but I'm also going to get a good grade. Well, Bernstein didn't like being talked to like that. <laughs> I didn't get in trouble for it, but... Even so, uh, he remembered that. And as it turns out, by the end of the school year, last day of class, he finally got to the exemptions. And he said, uh, you just keep working on what you're doing, and I'm going to hand some of you an envelope, and you'll know what this is. So, he had maybe five envelopes in his hand. And he started handing them out. And he walked around the room very haphazardly. He kept, like, zigzagging through the room as he did this. Maybe it's something he always does. Maybe it was a little thing for me. I don't know. Obviously, you know what's coming. But he ended up handing one to this girl, Elise, I think her name was, who actually sat in front of Patty on the other side of the room. Somebody back over there got one. One person in the front over here got one. Somebody else over here got one. And then he sort of turned the envelope upright so it was long like this, so he kind of hid it from view from me because I was watching him intently. And he starts walking back to his desk, and he gets about three steps away from my desk, and he says, oh, and he turns around and puts it on my desk. So I got my exemption, and that was that. Uh, Bernstein, God, I don't know. Patty's got stories about Bernstein, too. What a strange character he was. But it all ended up working out. I met a future whiff, and I had gone to the library for a lot of that class, and I had um, done well in it and got my exemption. So <laughs> he was right. It wasn't a privilege. It, it wasn't a privilege. It was a God-given right. There you go, Bernstein. And obviously, as you know, Bernstein was Jewish, so we kind of had a little something going there, you know, if you know what I mean. Anyway, that was that one, so thank you very much for watching. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.